Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Trivedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati and what we were discussing, we were discussing about the different aspects within the course called uh, molecular biology. So, so far what we have discussed, we have discussed about the different aspects of cell biology, we have discussed about the central dogma of molecular biology. So, within the central dogma of molecular biology, we discuss in detail about the replications, transcription and translations. And in addition to that, we have also discussed about the different types of molecular techniques which are being developed. And uh, continuing that discussion, we have also discussed about the genome editing in the previous lecture. So, now since we reached to the end of this particular course, we are decided that we should also discuss about the potentials of studying the molecular biology and how that can be helped to develop the different types of uh, techniques and different types of products which can be very, very helpful for the human society. So, if you see the molecular biology, the molecular biology is a very diversified um, you know field. So, it actually has a different types of tools and techniques and all those kind of uh, uh, avenues and that is why it has uh, extensive, uh, uh, extensive applications in the different fields of the biotechnology or in general it is having a ap application in the uh, so much uh, diversified field that it is very difficult to uh, uh, it is very difficult to incorporate all the possible fields. But uh, I, what I have listed here is only the fields which are very very common and uh, very very popular. So, for example, the molecular biology has a very extensive uh, to uh, application in the agricultural field, PC culture, poultry, vaccines. Uh, it is being used extensively for developing the transgenic animals, different types of medicines. Uh, then it also been used for developing the genetically modified organisms and drug delivery. So, uh, since the uh, applications are so much diversified, it is very difficult to incorporate or and discuss all these applications in a in a in a couple of lectures so i have decided that i am going to only focus on the three or four different aspects so that it will give you an idea that what will be the potential of the molecular biology and what could be done actually with the using the this particular technique and then uh, with this brief discussion uh, it could be possible that you may be able to uh, understand the importance of the molecular biology for the human society and it also can help you in designing and developing your own product. So, what we are going to focus? We are going to focus on to the four aspects. We are going to focus on the uh, genetic engineering, we are going to focus on the PCR based applications, we are going to uh, focus on the how the molecular biology is being used for developing the different types of transgenic animals and how these transgenic animals are having the role in the different aspects related to the whether it is related to poultry or whether it is related to other fields. And then we also going to discuss very briefly about how the genome editing approaches can be uh, having the applications in the diversified field and how that can be used. So, let us first start with the genetic engineering and then we are going to uh, discuss about the transgenic animals and then we also going to discuss about the PCR based applications and then we also going to discuss about the genome editing. So, as I said in the genetic engineering, this we have discussed in detail that what is the genetic engineering? Genetic engineering is that you are actually going to engineer the DNA and you are actually going to allow the development of the uh, genetically modified organisms and this is actually the general schemes which actually going to be followed where you are actually going to isolate the particular gene from the genome and uh, if you recall in uh, previous modules we have discussed about how you can be able to isolate a particular gene fragment either utilizing the genomic library or the cDNA library or utilizing the uh, polymerase chain reactions. And then once you got the gene, then you are actually going to digest that with the restriction enzyme that is actually going to generate the coevents. And then uh, once the coevents are being generated, the similar procedure you have to follow for the vector also. 
and then you are actually going to get the cohesive ends both on the vector and as well as on your insert then you are going to put them into the ligation reactions and the post ligation you are going to transform that or you are going to deliver this DNA into the host cells and then you are going to screen and select the desirable clones and then ultimately these clones are ready for the future development or future applications. So, uh, as far as the genetic engineering is concerned, these are the tools which are required for doing the genetic engineering and these are the important procedures which are actually been important for doing the genetic engineering where you are actually going to do the isolation of genomic DNA, polymerase chain reactions, restriction enzymes, ligations and all that. And once you are done with this, you are actually uh, at the end of this, you are actually going to have the products, right? You are actually going to develop the products or you are actually going to generate the enzymes which are actually going to have the diversified applications in the different industries. So, uh, if you talk about the dairy industry, right? Uh, the dairy industry is extensively been using these products which are being developed by the genetically modified organisms. So, they are actually producing the different types of proteins or they are also producing the different types of enzymes and these enzymes are being having the uh, uh, extensive applications in the food industries. So, you can have the uh, enzymes which are having the extensive role in the dairy industry, you are also having the enzyme which are having the role in the brewing industry, baking industries, wine industry and as well as the meat industries and uh, we will not going to discuss in detail about these enzymes and how they are actually going to perform the different types of functions and how they are actually going to be useful, but uh, very briefly we will talk about what are the how these enzymes are uh, having the application in the particular field and how you are actually going to be produce those enzymes. So, first we start with the dairy industry. So, in the dairy industry, we have the four enzymes which are called rennet, lactase, protease and catalase and all these are actually having the different types of applications and all these enzymes are genetically being cloned into a particular overexpressing uh, cell and that is how they are actually being produced onto the industrial scale and then they are actually being used into the dairy industries. So, as far as the rennet is concerned, uh, it is extracted from the stomach of the young calves and apart from that it also been developed by the uh, recombinant DNA technology. Uh, this contains the enzyme that cause the milk to become the cheese. So, it is actually an enzyme which converts the milk into cheese and uh, it separates the solid uh, curd and the liquid whey. And the different animal rennets are also being used for the different cheese and most common vegetable rennet is thistel. Okay. So, rennet is an enzyme which is actually being used for converting the milk into the cheese and that is how they are actually going to help in, uh, in, the, in the dairy industries. Then we have the lactase. So, lactase is present in the brush border of the small intestine. It is artificially extracted from the yeast and it is required for the digestion of the whole milk and it is used in the production of lactose free uh, milk, right. So, you know that the milk is, uh, uh, is a dairy product which contains the sugar, right and the sugar component of the milk is always the lactose and you know that the lactose intolerance is a very, very big issue because if you, if the somebody is lactose insensitive, uh, then it is actually going to develop, uh, it, this lactase will, lacto lactose is not going to be digested. And as a result, the lactose is going to be remain undigested and remain in the stomach and that is how it is actually going to cause the production of gas and bloating and all those kind of things. So, to avoid that, you are actually can get the milk which is free of lactose. And how you are going to do that? You are actually going to uh, digest the milk with the help of an enzyme which is called as lactase. So, what the lactase is going to do is it is actually going to uh, you know take the lactose from the milk and it is actually going to chew up, right. So, it is actually going to eat up all these lactose and that is how it is actually going to make the milk which is free of lactose and that uh, lactose free milk is actually having a very high economical values compared to the normal milk because that milk can be given to 
the patients it can be given to a special people who are actually having the lactose uh, sensitivity and lactose intolerance and all that. Uh, it is also been used in the production of ice cream and the sweetened flavor and the condensed milk. Then we have the catalase. So, it is catalase is produced from the bovine liver and the microbial sources. It breaks down the hydrogen peroxide to the water and the molecular oxygen and along with the glucose oxidase, it is used in the treating the food wrappers to prevent the oxidations. And it has also been used to remove the traces of hydrogen peroxide in the process of cold sterilizations. So, the catalase is very, very important for detoxifying the hydrogen peroxide, which is going to be residually be present into the uh, food products, uh, because many of the food products are being sterilized with the help of the hydrogen peroxide and the hydrogen peroxide is toxic. So, to remove the hydrogen peroxide, you are just adding the catalase and the catalase, what catalase is going to do is, it is going to convert the hydrogen peroxide into the water and oxygen. Then we have the proteases. So, proteases are the general enzyme. They are actually being used in the many industries. Uh, they are being used in the, uh, you know, the dairy industries, the meat industries and all that. So, proteases are being um, widely been distributed in the biological world and they hydrolyzes the specific peptide bond to generate the paracasein and the macropeptide in the production of cheese and uh, that results in the bitter flavor to the cheese and also in a desired textures. Then let us come to the brewing industry. So, within the brewing industry as I said you know protease is very very common with, within the dairy within the different types of industrial setup. Then we can have the uh, beta glucanase, we can have the alpha amylase and the amylogacrosidase. So, protease uh, is uh, protease works to provide the wort with the amino acid nutrient that will be used by the yeast, right. So, and protease work to break up the large proteins which enhance the head retention of the beer and reduce the haze and it, it fully modified the malt these enzymes have done with their work during the malting process. Then we have the beta glucanase. So, beta glucanase represent a group of carbohydrate enzyme which break down the glycosidic bond within the beta glucan. It aids in the filtration after the mastication and the murine. Then we have the alpha amylase. So, alpha amylase convert the starch to the dextrin in producing the corn syrup and it solubilizes the carbohydrate found in the barley and other the cereals used in the brewing. It decreases the time required for the mashing. All these technical terms like mashing and brewing and all those we are not going to discuss and neither I expect that you should know all this. But if you are interested, you can read about these content and read material uh, in somewhere else. Then we have the baking industry. So, in the baking industry, you can have the maltogenic amylase, you can have the glucose oxidase and you also have the pentonases. And all these are actually having the diversified function and the applications within the baking industries. So, maltogenic amylase. So, it is a floor supplements. It has anti-stalling effect. It modifies starch while most of the starch starts to gelatinize. Resulting starch uh, granules become more flexible during the storage. Then we have the glucose oxidase. The glucose oxidase oxidizes the glucose and produces the gluconic acid and the hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide is a strong oxidizing agent that strengthens the disulfide and non disulfide crosslink in the glutens and it good working condition help proper functioning of the baking bakery systems. Then we also have the pentonases, so it exact mechanism is not yet discovered. It improves the dove mechanability, yielding a more flexible, easier to handle dove. The dove is more stable and give better if oven spring during the baking. Then we also come to the wine industry. So in the wine industry, we have the two enzymes, that the pectinases and the beta gluconases, which have the extensive role. And both of these enzymes can be produced with the help of the recombinant DNA technology. So, pectinases, uh, pectinases prevents the pectin from forming the haze and hence to get the clear solutions. 
uh, additionally used for the extraction of color and juice from the fresh fruits. It breaks down the pectin and releases the methanol and high amount is hazardous. Then we also have the uh, beta glucanases and it accelerate all biological mechanism linked to the maturation on leaves. It reduces the maturation durations and it improves the clarification and filtration and improves the action of the uh, fining indigens. Then we come to the meat industry. So, within the meat industry we have the two enzyme when it is called as the proteases, the papain. The proteases or the papain both are actually being used extensively in the meat tenderizations. Okay. So, meat tenderization actually enhances the uh, economical value of the meat and also enhances the taste of the meat and that is how it actually been very very desirable and both of these enzymes are being cloned and over expressed and that is how they are being used in the industry. So, first is the proteases. So, protease uh, cleaves the bond that hold the amino acid together as the enzyme break down protein which which disrupt or loosen the muscle fiber and tenderizes. It. So, when you treat the meat with a uh, with a uh, protease it is actually going to you know break the peptide bonds and that is how it is actually going to make the meat little soft and easy to digest and it also gives the some different flavor and that is how it is actually going to be uh, used uh, in enhancing the taste of the meat and that is how it is actually being desirable to have this particular type of uh, enzyme in large quantity and that is how they are being used. Uh, they are being produced with the help of the recombinant DNA technology. Then we have the papain. So, papain which is found in papaya, 95 percent of the meat tenderization available in grocery stores are made from the papain. It is extracted from the latex in the papaya fruits and these enzymes are purified and sold in the powder or the liquid form and that is how they are actually being used. Uh, now, let us come to the uh, another field where the product of the genetic engineering can be used. So, another industry is the medicinal uh, medicinal world. Okay. So, in the medical medical world the uh, the product of the recombinant DNA technology is being used extensively as a drug, as a vaccine, as a adjuvants, as in the gene therapy and all those kind of things. And all these are actually requiring the knowledge of the molecular biology. So, let us first discuss about the applications in the medicinal science. So, medicines are class of molecule used to correct the disturbance in the host physiology. They can be chemically in nature and used to inhibit the aberrant enzyme activity from the host or pathogen. In few cases, the host enzyme can be supplied as a drug formulation to drive the biological reaction. Biotechnology has a potential to contributing into the development of the drug molecules and uh, biotechnology means the genetic engineering right. So, with the help of the genetic engineering the recombinant DNA technology you can be able to clone these uh, uh, proteinaceous uh, substances or the enzyme and then you can be able to supply. So, you can actually have the four different classes one is the production of theoretically important proteins. You can actually be able to do the gene therapy, you can be able to develop the vaccines and you can also be able to produce the monoclonal antibodies. And all these aspects require the extensive knowledge of molecular biology so that you can be able to manipulate the cells, you can be able to clone a particular gene and you can be able to use that for the different types of applications. So, let us first discuss about the production of the typically important proteins. So, a large number of genetic or metabolic diseases can be corrected by supplying the protein or the factors. Following the advancement in the biotechnology, many other proteins or factors are produced in the different bacterial expression system. In an approach, the gene of the enzyme or the protein factor is cloned into the appropriate plasmid to produce the recombinant clone. One of the such example is the human insulin, right. Human insulin is one of the widely uh, you know supplied uh, uh, biological product right and you know that the diabetes is a very big disease right and uh, human insulin is uh, is actually being required to lower down the blood glucose and that is how it has a very huge uh, ma uh, market in which you can be able to use. 
So earlier, when the recombinant technology was not known, the human insulin is always been isolated from the animal sources and then they are actually being given to the patient and the major drawback of this particular approach is that since you are giving the insulin from the uh, from the animals they may actually have the allergic reactions or they may actually not be get accepted by the human system right and that's how in those cases in those era the insulin was creating a lot of problems so to uh, correct that particular problem what people have done is they have when, when the people were you know uh, recombinant known the recombinant technology how they will know how to clone the uh, gene and how you can be able to use that for producing the protein what they did is they have cloned the insulin so insulin is a protein of two uh, chain you have a chain you have a b chain and both of these a and b chains are connected with the help of a disulfide leakages right so what you can do is you can produce the a chain you can produce the b chain separately and then you just combine them and that's how it is you are going to get a functionally active the insulin molecule so what you're going to do is you're going to isolate the gene a you're going to isolate the gene b you're going to transform that into the bacteria and that's how you're going to get the gene uh, peptide A, right? And you are going to get the peptide B and ultimately you are going to mix them. You're going to do the, you know, the, uh, you're going to change the conditions in such a way that the disulfide linkages are going to be formed and that's how you are actually going to have the functionally active insulin. So that is what it is written here that insulin is a dimer of A chain and B chain linked by the disulfide bonds composed of the 51 amino acid with a molecular weight of 5808. A schematic representation step of given right in this particular figure. In this uh, process the gene A and B is cloned into the bacterial plasmid separately to produce the two recombinant clones. Peptide chain A and B is overexpressed in the E. coli and recombined together to produce the functional insulin. So this is just a simple example to show you the potential of molecular biology, potentials of the combinant DNA technology to say that how uh, 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 something which was very very crucial for the human uh, welfare was being done with the help of the uh, molecular biology. Earlier people were you know getting the lot of uh, side effects, uh, side reactions and all those kind of things. So apart from insulin there are so many different types of pharmaceutically important molecules are being generated with the help of the molecular biology. So what we have is we have the protein uh, factor 8 right and the factor 9. These are the factor which are required for the blood clotting. So they are actually being required for the treatment of the hemophilia. Then we have the tissue plasmogen activator that is also being required for the thrombosis. Then we have the lactoferrin. Lactoferrin is being used for treating the GI tract infections. Then we have the human protein C that is required for thrombosis. Then we have the alpha 1 antitrypsin that is for the emphysema. Then we have the fibrogen. Fibrogen is required for the wound healing, right? So in some cases what happen is that when you get the wound, you are not producing the enough quantity of fibrogen right and you know that the fibrogen is being get converted into the fibrin and these fibrin fibers are actually covering the wound and then only it is actually going to work to you know to heal the wounds so in those cases you are actually going to do the you know the you are going to use the recombinant technology to produce the fibrogen and that fibrogen can be used for wound healing then you also have the pro 542 uh, uh, and that is being used for the HIV infections. Then we have the antithrombin uh, anti 3 that is for correcting the thrombosis. Then we have the collagen 1 that is being required also for the tissue repair. And then we also require the serum albumin that is for increasing the blood volume. Okay, This is very important right? because if you are running with the low in protein, you, your blood volume is also going to be reduced to maintain the tonicity and as well as the osmolarity. So if you increase the protein volume into the your blood, the blood volume is also eventually going to increase. 
So, apart from that you can also have the recombinant uh, chymosin and the recombinant human growth factors and recombinant blood clotting factor 8. So, these are the some of the uh, proteins which are required for the different types of applications. Now, apart from this you can also have the protein you can also be able to do the gene therapy with the help of the molecular biology. So, production and supply of recombinant protein is a temporary solution for a treatment of a disease condition. In another approach the human expression system is used to produce the proteinaceous factor after inserting the recombinant clone into the human cell or inside the human body. Recombinant DNA is packed into the appropriate DNA delivery uh, system like you can use the viral system, you can use the liposomes, you can make all those kind of things to deliver the gene into the human cell to correct a mutated gene or encode a therapeutic protein drug to provide the treatment. So, gene therapy is a also very very common and very very popular method through which you can be able to correct the problem at the molecular level right. Uh, what you have seen that when we are genetically you know producing the proteins uh, you are actually supplying only the protein part. But that protein is having the half life right. So, that protein get disappear after some time. But in this case what we are doing is we are putting the DNA. So, once we are putting the DNA into the cell DNA will keep producing the protein for a longer longer period of time and if it is a permanent transfection, if it is a permanent integration then it actually going to also change the cells and then the cure is going to be permanent. So, there are two different types of gene therapy you can have the somatic gene therapy or you can have the germline gene therapy. So, somatic gene therapy is for those cells which are like somatic cells like uh, for example, muscles, liver, pancreas on those kind of thing. And then you can have germline gene therapy in this the therapeutic approach the germline cells like the sperms or egg are transformed by the introduction of required gene to produce the protein or correct a mutated gene. So, this is actually going to be done in the sperm as well as the egg. So, that the offspring the corrections are not going to be done in the that current gene uh, current uh, uh, generation, but it also going to be done into the future generations. And in that case it, this particular correction is going to be done for the several generations. Whereas, in the case of somatic it is only going to be for that individual where you are doing the gene therapy. Whereas, for the germline gene therapy it is also for the uh, uh, incoming generation as well. So, the technical problem what is associated with the gene therapy is that it is short lived because as I said you know you are going to insert the DNA into the cell and recombinant DNA may express may not express or it may actually get rejected by the system. Then we also have the immune reactions because you are injecting the virus containing gene and all that. So, it is also can have the viral infections uh, viral reactions. Then since you are using the viral vectors uh, which can cause the uh, you know the immune reactions adverse immune reaction and toxicity and then it also can disturb the human physiology because uh, it also the gene integrate into a wrong place in the genome it may cause the functional defects and this is what we have discussed when we were discussing about the homologous and non homologous recombination as an approach to for the genome editing right. So, this is what one of the approach where you are actually going to put the flanking sequences as a homologous recombinant homologous sequences and utilizing these flanking sequences the gene of your gene what is present onto your vector is going to be inserted into the vector into the whole in, into the genome of that particular cell. But if any of these events are go wrong then the gene may get integrated into uh, off target sites and that actually is going to cause the problem into the host physiology because then it is actually this see it is not going to correct the problem, but it is also going to uh, make the additional problem because the it may replace some of the gene which was working correctly. Now, apart from this you can also be able to use the recombinant DNA technology for producing the vaccines. So, vaccine is being given to develop the immunity against a disease in a human or the vertebrate animals. Vaccines are of different types like the dead or attenuated organisms or the protein derived from them. 
There are different strategies to enhance the immunological responses to give the long lasting protection against a disease with the minimum adverse effects. Uh, there are four different types of vaccines. You can have the killed vaccines, you can have attenuated vaccine, you can have a toxoid, you can have a subunit vaccine and you can also have the conjugate. So, all of these approaches are requiring the one or other tools of molecular biology for developing the vaccine. You might have seen the COVID vaccine, how the people have utilized the uh, molecular biology tools to develop the COVID vaccine in a very small, uh, very short span of time. And uh, that is the potential of the molecular biology. So, this is what we have discussed in the in the genetic ingenuity. So, within the genetic ingenuity, you are actually going to produce the proteins or you are actually going to produce the recombinant DNA and that can be used for generating the different types of plasmids or different types of products and uh, that different types of product can be used for treating the different types of diseases or it can be used for correcting the uh, particular type of errors into the metabolic reactions. So, with this I would like to conclude my lecture here in our subsequent lecture we are going to discuss some more applications of the molecular biology. Thank you.